Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolade Zadon. I remain your host, Chad, if you're 3333, and this next match is going to be between North Chilean G and Link, so I don't think I've actually ever casted. Same with Juliet and Ciceroth last game. Those those were newer players on the channel. So, let's begin. Avalanche is a very small map, so I imagine both players are going to be playing relatively aggressively. It is a map that you tend to see people playing along this middle lane. Sometimes they go along the southwest, occasionally in the northeast. The northeast is usually kind of a sneaky path. You go up there because your opponent usually doesn't expect it. North Chilean G going for Amphib, going for Worker first. On a map this size, that is a risky move. Lynx, on the other hand, going for a heavy Glaive Assault. Five Glaives right off the bat, that is much more what I would expect. They'll need to be regrouped, however. This this line formation setup... Nah, there we go, okay. They have the regroup in the center of the map, that is perfect. Because going one at a time is not what you want to do, unless you want your units to die. In which case, go ahead and do it. That's perfectly fine. It's not a productive suicide, but it is a suicide. Can't imagine why you'd want to do that, though. North Plain G only has one duck to help protect against these five glaives, which, if they're bunched up, will actually work. If Link's line moves them, make sure that they are at a relatively safe distance from each other, and it looks like that is the plan. But it's not going to happen in time. The duck should be able to get a few good shots. Three ducks? No, that's more than enough. That is way more than enough. And Link's wisely retreating, trying to avoid the defenders as much as possible. Unfortunately, that is not enough. It looks like Link's seeing if they can find anything over to the southwest. Or, well, yeah, the southwest, the entire southwest area here. And they won't. North Chilean G has yet to expand over to the southwest. Now, Lynx, if they know what they're doing, and it looks like they might, they are going for Warriors. They are not going for Roccos, but they are going for Warriors, which is still a good choice. When you're dealing with Ducks as Cloaky, you want to have Roccos and Warriors, because that does the trick. Ducks... Ducks beat Glaives. They don't beat much else out of the Cloaky Bot Factory. North Chilean G, however, going for a counterattack, and this will work if they go for it. They have to go for it now, though. The fact that they paused here will actually cause it not to not work. They needed to have just continued, unabated, no fear, rush into Lynx's base and deal with things. But now the warrior is going to be done in time, and these ducks will have no shot at killing basically anything. It's going to be a donation, pretty valuable donation, about 150 metal, but still. It's not a good idea to donate that much metal to your opponent at this stage in the game. Especially when your opponent, and Lynx, is actually quite a ways behind economically. North Chilean G has taken the center, taken about 15 metal worth of extractors, well, plus the commander. And there's the ducks coming in here, there's the warrior to stop them, and Lynx, while taking a bit of damage, that's no good for them. They're actually not expanding that quickly to begin with, so... That actually is worse. That's the thing, though. North Chilean G, they're playing it smart. They do have the raiding force of ducks, which... One of them did die, sure, but not all of them. And not only that, they did manage to kill a metal extractor, and Lynx is way behind economically already, so this just doesn't even help. North Chilean G has very nearly claimed center control entirely. I mean, it's possible with the right composition to deal with this, but the problem is North Chilean G's commander is in the way, and while they don't have any particular upgrades, no weapons or anything, that is still the threat. Of course, the half dozen ducks also helps. At this point, Lynx with a couple warriors, a few glaives. Not really an army worthy of dealing with the ducks right now. The warriors are going to help. The glaives are going to die. I mean, I could see maybe Rocco's... Like I said, Rocco's would actually work pretty well. I can understand why you might not want to. Rocco's are not currently the most accurate unit in the game. They've actually... I don't know what's going on, but they're having a hard time actually hitting things. So I could see the hesitation. However, ducks are still weak to Rocco's. And strong against glaives as demonstrated there. But warriors are strong against ducks, so it all works out. Because warriors can kill the ducks, and then the ducks die. Because things die when you kill them. And Glaive's coming in here, getting rid of part of the first line of, of defenders, but it's not really enough. That does open the doors somewhat for the warriors to come in here, but there's too much defense. They will not be able to deal with this. Two warriors can deal with the commander if the commander is undefended, but that commander is heavily defended. So the warrior only able to deal a bit of economic damage, maybe kill a few ducks here or there. Well, it gets rid of a metal extractor, gets rid of two or three ducks, but North Chilean G is going to reclaim the lot of it and not really worry too much about any of the losses. 
That being said, Lynx did manage to take advantage of that time to go out and expand a little bit. Not as much as I would recommend, but a bit. The problem is that North Chilean G hasn't really taken the Southwest at all, and Lynx, they're, they're running out of time to do so. But they did have a chance during that fight. They could have easily taken that and made it their own. That would have helped deal with quite a few of the problems they're currently facing. On the other hand, Lynx... What are you doing? You're getting really defensive inside of a very small corner of the map. And losing a constructor, which, as I always point out, is a very dangerous thing to do. You never want to lose a constructor if at all possible to avoid it. And that's no exception. But at this point, we just see warriors and glaives. No scythes, no specters, no rockos, no hammer. I mean, okay, I wouldn't say hammers in this situation would be a particularly useful choice, but still... Size and specters, or at least specters, to deal with ducks. Amphib doesn't have an answer to specters that easy, because they don't have anything that can easily screen. And the things they do have, I mean, the ducks are the best they have, and those are expensive. But it looks like Lynx, their plan is to overwhelm with numbers. Just get as many glaives as possible and deal with things that way. North Chilean G, on the other hand... Going for lots of boys, and going for a sneak attack along the south side of the map. The southwest is where Lynx expects to win this. Sorry, North Chilean G expects to win this. Lynx does not. Lynx's commander pretty much in a death position. Fortunately for them, not a whole lot of units came up there. I guess North Chilean G had not realized Lynx's commander was at the southwest. I mean, why would they? Actually, come to think of it, what radar do they have? No, they don't have radar coverage of that one section. That's actually a blind spot for North Chilean G, so... Okay, that works for Lynx. That works quite well for Lynx. That being said, Lynx's commander is just standing there taking boy shots. Lynx's commander is going to die here. It needs to jump out of there. I don't understand why... There, okay, there we go. I was wondering when that was going to happen. It's... That should have happened way earlier. Lynx's commander will live for now, but it's... doesn't matter, really. I mean, unless Lynx can break through this line here. And this is actually... Probably the only timing they really have. North Chilean G's commander is set up with a beam laser, but this stinger, that's a lot of the money that that North Chilean G's been spending. It's not going to be spent. North Chilean G's commander going down, thanks to the warriors. Two warriors is enough for undefended, but four warriors for that set up with the defense. The defense is more than enough. And getting rid of the commander does mean North Chilean G's economy does weaken a little bit. They don't have the storage either. They didn't have a whole lot in storage, mind you. But their energy economy or the weakness in the energy economy is causing problems, and they're also not going to be reclaiming for a little while. That being said, a counterattack is being prepared over to the southwest, as North Chilean G sets up fire bases all along the southwest, and basically has their staging area nicely defended. And Lynx having lost all their forces attacking in the center, and not fully breaking it. Partially breaking it, getting rid of the commander, which is good, but not fully breaking it. They don't have a whole lot to defend against this assault coming from the southwest. They do have fair amount of lotuses inside their base, like two or three lotuses, three, de three defenders. That will reduce the army size somewhat, but Lynx's commander is unupgraded and taking all this damage. All we have going on here, repairs coming in from the Conjurers. I mean, that's something, but it's not quite going to be enough. That being said, North Chilean G does not have the firepower to deal with this. Realizing this moves away. What is their, what is their backup strategy? They've got to have something because they have ducks for reinforcements. But they probably realize at this point that the center is open. Lynx has nothing in the center. They're focused entirely on the southwest. They're not focusing on the center lane. And that could be North Chilean G's ticket to victory. Lynx losing the southwest is going to be another open path. At this point, if North Chilean G attacks from both sides at once, they'll probably take the game. It's a little tough, though. The numbers don't work in their favor. And Lynx is getting... Quite a lot of reclaim, actually. Or well, they were. There's more reclaim they can take, but... Yeah, at this point, the main reclaim is this, where the commander dropped. And that's... That's claimed by nobody, but I can't imagine North Chilean G easily letting that go. I can't imagine Lynx taking that. They appear to be going for it, though. The problem, however, for them is that North Chilean G is taking some of the reclaim that was lost in the Southwest battle. And Lynx looks like they're trying to use the commander to set this up as well. No, setting up defense is not setting up for the reclaim. But they are going for the Rockos, which at least is something they're finally doing the thing that I was hoping they would do five minutes ago. And we'll see how well it works too, because the boys are in place. The boys are going to be a bit of a problem, but the Rockos, 
Well, there aren't enough of them. That's a bit of a secondary problem. This is actually where Glaze would be very handy. But at the same time, the boys are being forced back. To some extent. But not enough to be meaningful. Ducks coming in, which won't do much. Even against the slowed down warriors. They, the warriors have to be dead for that to be effective. But that is exactly what is going to happen. As the warriors do go down. And there's not much that can be done to deal with this. So right now, Link's just collapsing completely, unfortunately. I'm not really sure what their plan is right now, other than setting up the defenses and hoping for the best. They've basically lost that reclaim field. Not completely, though. It has okay, there it is. There are the conches. That is going to be it. North Chilean G doing the two-pronged attack while reclaiming. Lynx's commander is almost going to go down, and Lynx, while they aren't relying on storage for anything right now, they're still going to be losing most of their economy if they lose their commander. And Lynx, what can you do at this point? Zeus isn't a bad idea. Zeus is not a bad idea, but it's a little late for that. This is the problem. Lynx... I almost wanted to see if this was the second game. Or, I mean, I guess if I don't usually do series. Actually, sometimes I do, but... It would be interesting to have seen Lynx in a second game against North Chilean G, having figured, oh, wait, this is the counter that would work against Amphib in the Cloak versus Amphib matchup. Because that is... If you're going to play Cloaky, the Amphib matchup is a really important one. I would argue it's in favor of Cloaky, but only if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, it's heavily in favor of Amphib because the typical Cloaky strategies of just swarm them with glaives and then transition from there, they don't work. And Lynx understands that to an extent, but I don't think they quite realize just how true that is. Like, basically, if you don't build glaives against Amphib, you're probably going to win. If you do build glaives against Amphib, you're going to have an uphill battle. North Chilean G, are you going to take this? Because it's your game to take. They come in with the boys, they come in with the ducks. Not much else is really coming in, though. It looks like North Chilean G just figures the large army exactly the opposite of Ciceroth last game. North Chilean G's options are, or at least the option they're taking, is build up a large army and just steamroll. And it's worth a shot. Now, the Zeus's, of course, don't work super well against the boys. It'd be more against the ducks. Really, like I said, Rocco's. Rocco's and Warriors are the way to go. Glaives can help against boys, but Rocco's in large enough numbers also work, because boys are quite expensive. I mean, they're about four times the cost of Rocco's. Like, Rocco's are only 90 metal each. Sorry, three times the cost. They're only 90 metal each, so you can have three Rocco's for every boy. It's no problem to easily overwhelm boys with Rocco's. Assuming they aren't established as they are now. Glaives work okay, but if Glaives get hit, they're done. And the duck support will usually get rid of Glaives as well. And this is it. Lynx going down. Their commander is done. They are done. That is game. GG. Called by Lynx, though not actually said. And that will end it. North Chilean G takes it pretty convincingly. I don't think there was any time where Lynx had an advantage, but it did seem like Lynx was getting an idea of how the matchup plays out. It's just... The lack of Rocco's early on in the match did not do them any favors. The use of warriors in the early parts of the match did. The use of glaives... It didn't because it was a frontline assault. I think if glaives had gone around the north side, attacked in the back, it would have been tough. Defensive ducks would have made that a hard time, but it would have pulled the ducks away from the front line. Which would have made the front line that much less defended. Or it would have dealt damage economically to the back line. Either way, it would have been beneficial, but unfortunately trying to force the glaives through the ducks, through the center line, did not work because it's not going to work ducks basically beat glaives they one shot glaives and they home their shots are almost undodgeable so glaives don't stand a chance anyhow that match being done next match will be 400 versus dying friend on eye of horus so stay tuned for that it'll be up in a couple minutes